I think people uh, in the tourism business in general should be very interested in accessible tourism because this will become a stronger and stronger factor in what attracts people to come to Europe. If they see other parts of the world are easier to travel to, are more welcoming, more comfortable, um, it'll be a hard choice uh, to go to Europe if they see that uh, it's difficult to get around and people don't really understand my needs. One in five people have an access need now when they're going away on holiday and if you don't cater for those needs then those people won't travel, they won't go on holiday and they won't spend their money in, in your country and your destination. So it's vital for the tourism growth of tourism and the economy that we embrace accessible tourism. We must go to the school, we must do the education about it, we must speak with the enterprises, and we must do all our efforts to let them understand that accessibility is not something uh, for healthy, but it's something that is good for the territory, is good for the economy, and is good for tourism. Accessibility training is a must, not only at an airport where it's regulate regulated, but any industry, any, any basically company that deals with tourism or the public in general should definitely invest in accessibility and awareness training because you need to know the needs and the barriers faced by these people to be able to offer good customer service and that's what it all comes down to, good customer service, that's what makes people come back. It is really about creating a seamless stream of, of accessible offers from the booking stage or pre-booking stage information until when you come come back home. You don't know who your next client is going to be and uh, if you work in the tourism industry you need to be uh, able to adapt to the needs of your customers and you don't, you, you don't know who's going to walk through the, do through the door next and what their needs are and what their requirements are. In the cases that we have studied, in between one year and a half and, and three years all the investments in accessibility and design for all are paid back. Then that means that this is a very good business. There's a high level of, lo of loyalty uh, uh, so we know that some of the, the, the clients that they have uh, with the uh, limitations are coming back again and uh, recommending. So this is uh, an interesting uh, contribution to the, to, the, to the business, especially in this uh, economic context. We are seeing that everything we're doing is really paying back very, very fast. I know when we were doing education in 2005 on 50 hotels in Sweden, we were really seeing that it was payback just in the first year. In the end, investing in a segment such as the disability market will reap a lot of returns. So you're not just being a good person, which is good to be a good person, but you're actually going to end up with more revenue and more profit and better bottom line. So it just seems a win-win-win. One person of one group decides what the whole group um, can do and we have a lot of conferences and meetings in our town and all the things. Mostly you have two, five, four people um, which need special help and they decide or they have to decide what, what the whole group is uh, possible to do. A goodwill is very strong as a motor but envy is also a very strong one and if somebody sees that somebody else is, is uh, receiving high marks for accessibility as a quality standard, people want the same. We have to uh, complement and support what member states do, but I believe we have, uh, within this job description what we have to do, there is a lot that we can do and certainly uh, uh, this is an agenda that we want to take further.